Hi, my name is John Cumming. I'm the president of the investment fund for Tamita Colgate. Today, we'll be presenting a stock pitch for you on Qualcomm Incorporated. All right, so let's start with the overview. Qualcomm was founded in 1985 in San Diego, California by a man named Erwin M. Jacobs, along with six other co-founders. Uh, the company's tied to Israel um, as a result of their research and development centers that the company maintains in the country. To provide some background information on the company, we can look at Qualcomm's business model. So it's a wireless technology and innovation company that develops, launches, and commercializes various products. Um, and one of these products includes modems, which are hardware devices that convert data from a digital format to one that's suitable for transmission between telephone lines, semiconductors, and 5G connectivity solutions. Qualcomm also operates through three main segments, um, which includes Qualcomm CDMA technologies, Qualcomm technology licensing, Qualcomm, and Qualcomm strategic initiatives. And moving on, um, here we have included Qualcomm's ticker in addition to the current trading price. Um, so for this presentation, we're proposing a buy pitch. In addition, we've established a stop loss price at $113. So using the Fibonacci retracement, there appears to be a resistance level at 113. So basically if the trading price drops below 113, we would plan on selling Qualcomm. Now moving on to our macroeconomic analysis of market conditions. Cell phone makers such as Android have looked to capitalize on consumers abandoning products made by Huawei technologies. As a result, we've seen a surge in demand for chips produced by Qualcomm. Yet, a lack of supply of subcomponents used in these chips has, has engendered inadequate production from Qualcomm. The firm will continue to experience this headwind as sanctions against Chinese chip makers persists. According to data provided from IHS Market, the 5G value chain will drive 3.6 trillion in economic outflow by 2035. In light of these speculations, we've seen the new generation of 5G technologies has already brought about competition between large tech and telecom companies over patent technology. That being said, Qualcomm leads, the, leads in this category with a staggering 140,000 5G and 5G applicable patents. For reference, competitors Nokia have about 3,000 3, 5G patents. We believe Qualcomm will be able to monetize this patent technology and subsequently create value for shareholders. Now we'll address some recent key developments. First, in the past year, Qualcomm has announced the development of a latest cellular chip called the Snapdragon 888. What makes the chip special is that you essentially get two tools in one device. Most cell phones require a chip which acts as the brains of the device and a modem which converts the device to a mobile network. Yet the Snapdragon 888 serves both roles. This engenders two primary benefits. First, phones have more space for large batteries, increasing battery life. Second, this will cut costs for manufacturers. In addition, Qualcomm has increased their quarterly dividend from 65 cents per share to 68 cents per share. This is great to see for shareholders. We also recently saw Qualcomm announce the acquisition of Nuvia, a small and talented tech firm specializing in CPU development. CPUs represent an essential component for the operation execution function of processors. Thus, we expect this acquisition will bolster Qualcomm's development of new Snapdragon processors going forward. Finally, in January, Qualcomm announced Cristiano Amon will take over as CEO of the company. Amon served as the president of Qualcomm's chip business for several years and brings a wealth of experience to his new role. Now we'll move on to the fundamental, fair value, and technical analysis. So when looking at the uh, fundamental analysis for Qualcomm, um, uh, taking a look at this comp set with um, Qualcomm's three largest competitors, Cisco Systems, Google, and NVIDIA, um, you can see that Qualcomm has um, very strong total revenue. And um, relative to uh, these three competitors, the EV to EBITDA um, is um, relatively low, which is um, a good sign. Um, considering the uh, much lower market cap for Qualcomm. Um, so, uh, yeah. Now we can move on to our fair value analysis. 
Here, we were able to calculate the intrinsic value of Qualcomm stock using a two-stage DCF analysis. We solved using the following assumptions. We found Qualcomm's weighted average cost of capital was 9%, or approximately 9%. We also utilized a potential growth rate of 2.5%. And Qualcomm has approximately 1.136 billion shares outstanding. On the right, you can see our projected free cash flow to equity for Qualcomm over the next four years. As a result of these assumptions, we arrived at an intrinsic value for Qualcomm stock of approximately $90. As the stock currently trades at around $127, this suggests Qualcomm is overvalued by about 40% of its fair value. At first, this may sound quite high, but we shouldn't be surprised given the current market is operating at an expensive level. We also know that tech stocks in particular have commanded a premium recently. It's certainly hard to find value in an overvalued market, Yet Qualcomm offers competitive advantages, specifically in the form of 5G technology patents. When looking at the uh, technical analysis for Qualcomm, uh, Qualcomm is uh, currently trading um, around 10% below its 200-day moving average, um, indicating that this would uh, this could be a good sign to um, to buy the stock. And um, when looking at the um, average or the the uh the last three months for qualcomm um there's been stable volume and a neutral rsi of uh 38 signaling that um this um company is neither overbought or oversold um and when looking at the um profit and operating margins for qualcomm the uh, profit margins are 22 percent and operating 29 percent um which shows that um they um uh, which is a which is a good signal for Qualcomm. So, and now shifting gears to our thesis risks, um, Apple has been a long-standing partner of Qualcomm. However, they recently decided to produce their own cellular modems, with this posing a risk to Qualcomm's future revenues. However, Qualcomm leads the way in five G technology and will hopefully be able to monetize the substantial supply of patents. And finally, Qualcomm still faces a significant headwind as many of their key subcomponents remain in short supply with this also posing a future to their future revenues. So to summarize our pitch for Qualcomm, uh, while the tech sector has not performed as strong in, re in recent months, uh, Qualcomm has uh, still seen growth in its revenue uh, with 80% revenue growth and uh, as well as um, having a, a net uh, an increase in net income of 165% year for year. Um, additionally, um, in the even even with the the current market for the tech sector, Qualcomm has acquired Nuvia, which um, uh, can be which will be a, a catalyst for growth um, for Qualcomm. Uh, so overall, our trade proposal is to buy Qualcomm. Uh, we've seen strong fundamentals, room for growth. Um, and uh, we will set a stop loss price at $113, um, which we previously discussed. And um, Qualcomm has been down 15% year to date, but rose 67% in 2020, um, signaling that uh, it still has a lot more room for growth. So, yeah. And then finally, we'd like to give credit to our presenters, the four here today, and the additional Tamid Colgate members as well.